Okay, guys, somebody asked a question about the MIDI drum map thing that uh, tutorial I did ages ago to remap your incoming MIDI notes from, say, a MIDI drum kit to trigger the drums that you want in any of Logic's kits. Okay, let me quickly recap on how you do that. You set up an instrument track with any Logic kit on it or any third-party drum instrument. This could be an electronic or an acoustic kit. It doesn't matter. Then you go to... Uh, open MIDI environment, right, and you want to drag these extra channels out the way. There is your stereo kit channel. If it's a multi out kit channel, you'll have the overheads with the actual drum kit or drum machine or instrument on it, and all the separate out channels. You just want to drag all these extras, like the click and any other channels, out of the way to isolate all your independent drum channels. That's the original overheads with the instrument on it, the, the group bus plus all the separate outs. Then you've got this preview channel, you can drag that out of the way as well. And then what you do is you go new mapped instrument, there it is, mapped instrument, and you connect the mapped instrument to your drum main channel, the, that is the main channel with the instrument on it, with the instrument in the in out slot, the actual software instrument. Don't remove, and that's it. Then on here you change your notes so if you go to say kick one on c1 and change its output change its output to the cowbell that means that if i that's that's c1 notes are now coming into this mapped instrument and now going to be outputted on g sharp 2 the cowbell and then d1 the snare drum D1, the snare drum, I'll set that to output to the ride. Okay, then what you do is once that you, you change the output for as many meters notes as you want, then you go make a new track, software instrument track, create, and reassign it. So, right click or command if you've got the right click assign to the toolbox, command click on the header where it says instrument whatever there and reassign the track to the mapped instrument. Now when this is now selected and you play MIDI it'll come in through that track uh, where's the MIDI bar? it'll come in through that track the mapped instrument, pass through there get that out of the way, pass through that mapped instrument into your drums uh, but so this track, if it's selected, and that's the one you play into, will pass your incoming MIDI notes from your drum pads through this mapped instrument object, which is assigned to that track, through to that track with the drum instrument on it, but re uh, sorry, reassigning the note numbers. So if I now have this track and play C1, oh, it's seized up. Why has it seized up on C1? Where's my cowbell? The cowbell stopped working for some reason. I don't know why. So I'll set it to tambourine. Tambourine for C1. Ride for D1. C1, D1. So C1 is triggering F sharp 2. And D1 is triggering F2. Tambourine. And right, so you map those to, to the drums, your incoming MIDI pad notes, drum kit notes, to the drums that you want. Right, fine. But here's the problem. Somebody said, that's fine, but if I then go to record um, my drums, right, here we go. One, two, three, four. Right. As long as those notes are on this track, they'll get re-channelized to the drums. And they'll always trigger the kit. But if you look at the actual notes, they're the original incoming notes, C1 and D1. And this person will say, well, how do I actually record the actual output notes of this? Right, this is, I found a way to do it. So this is how you do it. You don't actually need the mapped instrument. Get rid of it. This is even better. 
Okay, uh, except it does mean that any once you do this, any incoming MIDI will be re-channelized, not just the stuff coming from your drum pads. And if you've got a MIDI master keyboard plugged in, you pl try and play a synth, any MIDI notes that are remapped on the map will be remapped for any mid the MIDI coming into the synths or anything, right? But you, there's a way to turn it on and off when you're recording drums, right? So all we do is this: keep the map. You can keep your drum map with all your carefully arranged input notes mapped to the output notes you want. That'll just stay the same. And you go back to the environment, and we're going to do something different. We're not going to do it in this view, this mix of view. We're going to choose all objects. Now you get a list like this, you see, but you go to view and detick by text. So you're not viewing it by text. Then you're viewing it as objects. Now what you'll probably see is you'll probably see it like this. All your channels will be cluttered up on top of each other. It'll all be... a a real mess like that and you'll be like what the hell it'll be something like that total chaos so what you do is just get the channels that are sticking out the bottom and drag them out the way well out the way any channels that you can grab the bottom like that right drag them out away you want to isolate this lot of stuff here and get the input note thing drag that out of the way nicely move the sequencer input over here Move the input view and get everything nice and separated out. That MIDI click can just stay there on its own. Right, everything nice there, like that. All nice and easy to view, right? There's your mapped instrument plugged in still to the drum channel. Right? So, what you do is you disconnect that and reconnect it back to itself. Now it's disconnected. This is your physical input. This will, mine says oxygen 25 because that's what is the keyboard connected and when I play the notes you see them triggered on the input note keyboard here C1 D1 and you see them in the input view here C1 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 D1 and then from there it goes to the sequencer input where all your instrument tracks get their feed so what you do is this disconnect the physical input from that little keyboard and plug it back into itself and then drag it out freshly and plug it into the mapped instrument. Now there it is plugged into the mapped instrument, right? Now plug the out from, from the mapped instrument into the keyboard and don't remove. So now what's happening is you go over here. Oh, come on, you go over there. What's happening now is the physical input, your MIDI's coming in, passing through the mapped instrument. So when I press C1 on my keyboard it will trigger whatever C1 is assigned to in my map which is look F sharp 2 and if I press D1 it'll be assigned to F2 so now you don't need that mapped instrument track at all you just set up your instrument track there and it is passing any incoming MIDI notes are passing oh, I've got so many environments open let's just close that one Let's close that one. That's so any physical input notes from your drum pads are passing through the mapped instrument and then into the sequencer input. So they're passing directly into the drum track, the instrument track. So now you can just put that into record. One, two, three, four. So I hit the wrong keys earlier. I accidentally hit the key next to it, that one. But look, it's not only triggered the right drums. That's where I accidentally hit the key next door. But the actual notes, let's just quantize that. But the actual notes are the notes coming out of the Mac keyboard recorded on the actual instrument track. Yeah. Yeah, easy peasy, right? So that's how you do it. Not only will your incoming MIDI notes be channelized, uh, but not channelized, um, rerouted by note to the drums that you want through the map, but they'll actually, you no, need, no, no longer need that mapped instrument track. You can record directly by just selecting the drum instrument track. The notes, all MIDI notes coming in from a master keyboard, your drum pads or whatever, will be channelized, uh, sorry, remapped through this map. Right. So 
you can use that to record your drums with the output notes being triggered from your input notes, whatever you want, and it will record those notes as well, exactly as they're coming out of the other side of the map, not as they're coming into the map. And now when you have finished recording your drums with your MIDI pads and you want to go back to using your keyboard without those notes triggering the wrong notes on a, on a synth or something, you just go to your environment and all you do is all objects uh, view like that. All you do is pull it out of the keyboard and plug it back into there. You must do it that way. Don't try and drag from one to the other. All the, all the routing gets messed up. Take that out and plug it back into itself. Right? And then simply plug the physical output, bypassing this mapped instrument now, directly into the keyboard. And now you're back where you were before. C1 plays C1, D1 play, plays D1. Now you can set up a synth track any keyboard track, whatever you want, and play your MIDI keyboard, and the right notes will be played for the right keys. But anytime you want to go back to doing your drums, you just go to the environment, unplug that, take that out and then plug it into your mapped instrument, then the mapped instrument into the keyboard, don't remove, and this map then takes over and remaps any incoming notes. And then when you finish doing the drums, disconnect that disconnect that and then plug that back into there boom yeah easy peasy that's how you do that